Hi, I'm Brian, and I'm going to show you how to replace the coaster trolley on the midsection of the Honda Odyssey door. This is a, it's a 2008. So the first thing you want to do is you want to open the door and then pull on the handle about there to get it to stop. Other thing I like to do is turn off the lights on the inside. So if you have the door one on, it's going to run your battery down, so just push the down position that turns off all the light. We're going to pull the tail light. You're going to need a little flathead screwdriver to pop off the little access tabs. You just go put a screwdriver in the bottom and pull it up. Then you want to take your weather stripping, uh, grab hold of it, pull it straight back from about here, about midway up your lift support, down to about here. And that's gonna give you access to pull the rest of this out here in a minute. Then you wanna pull this little tab out right here. What I do is I've got these little handles uh, that I can use where you grab the seat. I just put the parts down in here. That way they won't get lost. There's nowhere to go from there. Pull out the screws. The Phillips are eight millimeter will work. Toss your screws in. They get this light to come out, pull out just a little bit and it'll start to come free. Then grab the front of the light and just pull straight back. There's a couple little plugs that you just little pinch the release and pull them out. So here's the tab that you just squeeze the back part of the light. If it squeezes this way and nothing happens, rotate 90 degrees, you'll fill that latch and it'll come undone. Once the tail light's off, you can get access to this little uh, 10 millimeter bolt. Just pull that out, throw it in the same spot. So looking down the door channel, we can see a Phillips screw right here. And it's non-ferrous, so don't rely on your magnetic tip to hold on to it. If you get a pair of needle nose pliers, that should... I cut little notches into my needle nose pliers with a cutoff wheel and that way they can grab onto things like this. It's just hard to film, that's all. A lot of tight spaces. Not like an engine compartment. So we got our screw, we're going to set it into... I just put them in the tracks for the seat right here. That way they can't go anywhere. So this is a piss poor positioning for the door. We want to have the door about halfway closed while we're working on it. Right about there is good. So once this is gone and that's gone, there's nothing to keep it from moving forward. We're going to slide this panel forward and it'll just come off. You want to just be real gentle. You want to occupy the same space coming back because you don't want where the screw was on this little guy to be scratching your van up. Um, but at the same point, at the same time, you don't want to scratch it on the back of this uh, trolley here. So we're going to take the panel and set it aside and put it in the driver's seat. Nobody's using that right now. We need to get that uh, panel off the inside so we can get some slack. Now this one has a spare tire mounted back here, so you've got a handle to pull and open this. So you want to go ahead and get it out of the way. It'll just pull straight out. It's like it's made to come out. Sweet. So while you're doing this, there's a little panel that if you can see for your seat belt right here. You could be pulling that off. Roll it back. It's, it covers the seat belt anchor and it also covers the little spring area. So rock it back this way and then pull straight back. It'll come out. Switch to 14 millimeter on your ratchet. And we're going to pull the seat belt anchor. Then we're going to get our body panel knife and pop the panel cover. So the bolt's going to stay in there, but you don't want to be working around this, so you take it and uh, just loop it up and through your oh crap bar. That's what you say when you grab this bar, oh crap, you know when you're off rotary. Throw your wrench up there, that's where you're going to be needing it next. Pull the spare tire out. That will give us better access to the rest of this. Lots of places to grab onto and pull at this point. Pop those body pins. You can see we've got this little uh, beauty cover here. If it doesn't come out easy, uh, get your panel knife. There's a link in the description where you can get these. Just pop that up, throw it in your little handle hole. And then there's the panel that you see right here. You got to pull it up, just the back side of it. You got to pull your uh, door jam molding off for the length of the panel. 
You'll have to pull the whole thing out, just some of it. Pop up your threshold. It's got a high threshold for holding on. But before you do that, slide up your uh, bolt cover on your seat belt. If you pull the seat belt back this way, you can get that cover clear up out of the way if you like. 14 millimeter bolt stays in, same as before, through the handle. Just toss it up there. Just give it a little tug, it'll pop up. So by now, you should have this thing to where you can get the bottom to kick out. And that's important because this one um, is a little different. Instead of being over the top, it, could, it goes underneath of this one. So this is on the top. So we're going to take your seat belt, slide it to the top position, and then get your bottom to kick out a little bit. Give you some room to push and pop that thing forward. Once it's been popped forward, you can kick the bottom out. So to unhook this, you're going to twist it to center, pull it through, and do the same thing with the seat belt here. That's the power outlet. Okay, so this part you got to pull up on the back panel, push down on this, and then that'll come free. And slip out, push down, and just kind of roll and slip it out like that. And I've got a power outlet here I gotta unplug too. Nice having all these power outlets, just nice not when you're working on these things. Okay, so we're free. Spare tires out, but everything's clear. Beauty, eh? Kick over the work line. See if we can melt some plastic and knock over the tripod, what do you say? So three electrical plugs, get one 10 outlet, 12 volt outlet, and your audio stuff. One here, one here, and one here. Super easy to get to though, piece of cake. So the reason why you pull this whole assembly off is to get to this little uh, plastic panel piece here. It, you would be able to just pull out the console, but the console's melted together um, where your little dump bin and all that is. You see the speaker and then that. If this were removable, it'd be a whole lot easier to do this job, but it's not. They're melted in place. You know, it's like a plastic pin and then they melt the other side of it. So you pull this down and then that gives you access to untension the cable. So we got tension on it. And then you can see there's just a little squeeze tab. So what I like to do is just use a pair of needle nose pliers. Um, but whatever it takes to get those things to pop up, there's two of them. There's one here and one here. Now, the main attraction. Find your speaker, work your way back, peel down this little guy. This one's got white goo instead of black goo. Access is way better on this though. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take some needle nose pliers, just pinch the bottom, and then push up. Pinch the bottom, push up. Driver's side's way easier than passenger side. So those two tabs, that gives us slack so that we can go back and forth independently, and then it also causes us to get a little bit of a pull to it, a little bit of spring release, so we have enough uh, free cable to get the trolley off. All that work just to get to those two little things. What a pain. That could be a lot easier, especially considering that these all fail. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little piece of hose in the jack stand. So here's what we're gonna do. I have a piece of 3 8 hose, doesn't matter, just something fuel hose, heavy duty. I'm gonna slit it with a utility knife all the way down. Take that, open up the end, and just slide it onto the bottom of your door. Then take that door and put it onto your jack stand. If it's not the right height, just get your jack, jack the band up a little bit. You want to lift the door up a little bit. So that it doesn't drop down, you want to make sure that you're just right on it. 
We'll lower that onto my stand. You could really bend the bottom of your door if you're not careful with this. If you look here, I've got all the room in the world. Um, you just kick this thing out. You don't have to pull out your uh, cable trolley or any of that kind of stuff. You can just leave that where it is. Uh, so we're going to pull the bolts out here. Um, you can mark it with a pin, but it's so dirty and there's such crud and junk in there. You can see where it is. Um, look at it. Make sure you can see what you're dealing with. Um, you got your little cutouts here. You can paint pen those. People really like doing that. Pull your bolts out. Now when I did that release there, I can move this in and out. So once I get this free, I can trolley this over this way. And then also, I've got a bunch of uh, slack going on here. I've got a lot of slack to work with. Now if you don't get this in the right position, and it can move around a lot, you got a great big washer on this um, so that you can position this just right to get the door so that it's nice and even and uh, parallel with the rest of the body lines. So take the bolt out, there's not going to be any weight on it because we have it supported on a jack stand. Go for bolt number two, these are 12 millimeter. So this one hasn't failed, but it's about to. If you have one of them go bad, there's a good chance the other one's going to go bad in the near future. That nylon and, uh, you know, use the doors about the same. We do anyway. Always getting people in and out. So before you get the second bolt out, take a rag, rag bag, piece of cardboard, whatever you want, stick it up underneath of there, and that way it won't hit down on this little surface here. Hard to paint that. Nobody will see it, but a rust streak will sure show, even if it's behind stuff. Okay, so we're free of the door now. So I'm going to grab my whole door and everything. I'm going to scoot it back just a little bit. Once it's scooted back, you can just tip it like this and then rotate it. Just slip your cable out one side, let it hang down, bring this around and do the other side. If you have a slack, it's not a problem. So we've got it out. Let's take it to the workbench and we'll swap it out. What happens is these break. Um, some people get just a ferrule or something and put that in place. But look how wobbly and floppy that is. It's just a mess. And then this one was just broken as you can see. So the replacement only comes with this much of it. So you're going to have to pull out this E-clip and you're going to have to swap that back over. Um, you can see that there's a little spring tension there. That's not going to fight you too bad. It's no big deal. Uh, but that's what was causing my door to not open and close. This was actually binding in the track. It was a big old mess. So I'm going to do both of them. I'm going to do the uh, passenger side, as you see here, uh, North America uh, version. And then I'm going to go do the other driver's side. So you can do this part of it while it's still in the van and leave the bolts in. You can see there's a lot of gap for your bolts um, in terms of position. Like I say, you already have marks there and you can see through in these two and that one. You just have an E-clip. An E-clip is uh, easily removed with a little flathead screwdriver. So I'm going to pull that out and set it aside. You want to put that back in place with a pair of needle nose pliers. So take the tension off your springs. Obviously you don't want to have uh, spring tension on that when you're pulling it out. Uh, you just get a little hammer, knock it out. If you want to do it on the workbench, I don't blame you. You can see that you've got a stamping here. Makes it a little harder to get out. Having it in the door might actually help get that started. Um, but once you get past those marks, then the rest is easy. You can see mine's pretty rusted. You want, I'm going to definitely be putting some grease on this. So this part is a toss throwaway part. You can see these are pretty tight. I'd pack these full of grease too. I don't know. If you got grease on the track, it's going to get on them. But if you can pack it in through the top, then I think that would help them to last longer. Let's take this guy. Put this back through. You're going to have to hit, hammer those uh, parts there. If you turn it and get it started in the old tracks, that'll help. You just tap it down. Like I say, I'm going to pull mine right back out and put a bunch of grease on it and clean it up. It's like my helicopter bag just fell down. 
uh, pliers anywhere, anybody, Bueller. And just squeeze it on like that, piece of cake. And so now we're ready to put this back in here. I want to put in this one first. You can see where they're just slotted. It's just like every other thing on a mountain bike or door handle that you've ever seen before. Just make sure that you get it uh, yellow wheels up. These are in the bottom. So with the tabs released on the inside, in theory, you can just pull this and stick it back in and it's not going to fight you too bad. There we go. So we're in, I'm just going to set it up inside of there for now, then I'm going to go get some uh, grease and grease a few things, then we'll slide the door back in and put the bolts in it. I like to grease around the wheels especially, the less they get stuck the better. So I'm going to push a bunch of grease all over the top and try to get it down in that, down on that axle line. Grease just anything and everything really. But mostly around the wheels because they'll distribute it up in that track where it's hard to get with your finger. Just rock it back, put it in, put it in the position to receive. Like that. Grab the bolts. Let's get them started in there. Now remember the hole is this great big square and the bolt only is uh, just a small circle so there's a lot of rattle room and you got to get it right or else the body lines aren't going to match up it's not going to want to close. So what I do is I just tighten it down all the way and then go back loosen it up and get it more correct. And the State of the Reunion's on right now. Every time I watch the State of the Union, I just feel like some abused girlfriend getting lied to. 2015 State of the Union. And it's just like, dude, this guy's speech writer is amazing. He should be like writing Independence Day movie speeches. Because they say all the right things and then they do the exact opposite. It's pretty maddening. Put a little pressure on that socket. So that doesn't just go back and forth. Everybody stands up and claps when he talks about having people get the rewards for their hard work. But the bottom line is, the United States is a corporation and has been since like 1871. And it's owned by other corporations, the government is anyway, you know, the DC, you know, 10 square miles or whatever it is, and all that stuff, satellite crap in Puerto Rico the balls that are from Puerto Rico. All right, so let's line this up, tighten it up. So once this is tight, we just push in those little tabs, the two tabs that are giving us a slack. And then we can test this door, open and close it a bunch of times, make sure we're all right, make sure body lines line up. If they don't, you want to make adjustments to it now, but even with everything put back on, you can still go back and fix these because they're exposed, but you might scratch up your uh, little side panel with your ratchet. Okay, so the door's in there. We're going to pull out our jack stand and our hose and our rag. Naturally, to push in our tabs. They're so easy on this side. Passenger side's way harder. All right, I'm looking at my lines here and I look like I'm a little bit high on this side. Beep. I got a big reveal here, I got a little reveal. That's yeah, actually not bad. Oh my gosh, it's hitting right here. The door's not forward enough, so I need to have that thing slide back. My bad. Whew. Living dangerous now. There we go. Interesting. There's a rusty line where the paint's off, where this is making contact with the rest of it. So I'm definitely going to want to do something about that. I want the whole door to be this way just a little bit. So I'm just going to loosen this. I'm going to put my hose and my jack stand back in place. 
and maintain the height so I don't have to mess with that. Alright, so that's all in order. Let me just show you what I'm talking about here. So this isn't from anything that I did just now, but you can see that there's a bunch of scratching and it's rusty there. And when we look in here, doggone it, I'm going to have to kick that out. Okay. So watch this little corner right here. See it make contact and scratch its way in. And you can see the scratch right there. So this hasn't been right for some time. That body line looks good here, but just right there. And when you go to open it, it gets stuck. And that's been an issue. And it just scratches back in. So I'm going to work on that a little bit. So I've done a little adjusting. I raise the back of the door up. And I also uh, push the door forward in reference to where the cable and everything is drawn on it. So let's see what we got now. Still looks pretty straight. Doesn't want to close though. Let's try again. Yeah, the back of the door looks like it is riding a little too high. It's not hitting here though. It's really weird. Wish I knew what it was causing for the cancel. Alright, well let's try again. Let's try something else. If something doesn't work, try something different, right? Could be that this is just malformed to begin with. It is kind of sticking out a little far. Maybe I went a little too high. Get a little looser on this back one. Still hanging up. You can see the washer marks where it used to be. I'm going to reset it where it was. Try that. Maybe with the good rollers it won't be a problem now. The washers tell where it was better than anything. Witness marks. Okay, that looks good. See how it opens. Well, it's almost like that. Let's see if I can keep the height and then get the door to slide a little bit back. So I did a little adjusting to get the door to be more forward and as you can see it's not making contact now and when I go to open it, it doesn't hang up, it opens just right away. So two for one, I got a fix of the uh, new uh, pulleys and the rivets and posts are all perfect. Hey look there's the guy with the camera, that's what he looks like when he's filming, I always wondered that. But uh, we got uh, a good fix so that this is adjusted properly and the roller's good. So now I just need to get a bunch of grease in this thing and we'll be in great shape. So on this cable thing, I remember the cable being on the inside on the other one. And it's on the outside on this one. I wonder if somebody messed that up too. So I'm in my new office, that's what it looks like, there's no shelf train. <laughs> I got my presidents here and a couple other, anyway you don't care about that. So new house, new office, and in the meantime the new studio or shop or whatever you want to call it where I do the filming is here. So this is the new garage, just thought I'd throw this in at the end just because it's kind of fun. It's also really echoey. So I got to do a little thing about that. 
So I got a bunch of foam. I'm gonna start doing things to get the sound better. Got a bunch of plywood. I'm gonna make some shelves up over the top and move things around a little bit. Just get things so I can work with them. I actually did the first vehicle video thing that I've done in this one. This little Honda Pilot did the brakes on that today. So anyway, we got two doors. We got a pretty high ceiling, which is nice. Um, anyway, just tons of junk everywhere. Junk, 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 junk. What'll be nice is in the near future, we're gonna do a bigger, better studio out this way. You can't really see, but there's the trailer out there. But out past all that dirt and stuff, I've got a bunch of room and there's gonna be something right about here. So that's in the works, it's gonna take some time. In the meantime, I think I'm going to fix this up reasonably nice. I had to grind the garage floor, it was all a mess. I got caught in a rainstorm and just it was soft in places and really textured in other places. I had to grind it. I haven't had a chance to do any floor coating or anything yet. Anyway, here's a new place for now. You got 11 foot ceilings. 12 foot would be ideal if you wanted to throw a lift in. That's just not happening, it seems. But we'll do it at the new building. But it's just going to take me a little bit of time. Fortunately, I've got about a year <laughs> worth of footage to edit. So there's not a huge rush, except for I'm OCD and I want it done. But that's a personal problem. <laughs> anyway, in the meantime, ask me about my ninja disguise. <laughs> Ha ha ha!